Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator, and I'm really excited about this new course we launched. Now, if you've been following with AutoHotkey, you know V1 is now officially dead as far as Lex is concerned. He's buried it, that he's is out, it's over. Yeah, but that the is correct. Major bummer is that in V2, there's really right now only one choice for using uh, a solid editor slash IDE, and that's VS Code. Now, VS Code is like the Ferrari, like... Um, let's say Notepad++ or Site or like your little Toyota, you know, it'll get you there and stuff. But what we've noticed is they're not that great with V2. Like they, they have, we've had their our issues. And right. yeah, um, anyway, VS Code example, is an amazing editor. I yeah, was I, just going to say Site, for example, which was the editor that we have been using for V1 and, and AHK Studio, are the ones that we have used for V1 for a long time. They have a lot of support and everything. When they when we try to switch them to V2, I see that the site for V2 is there. But then it has little quirks, like when you install it, your HK files don't work anymore. And uh, like when you double click, it opens in in the in this in the editor instead. And you fix that, and then after a few weeks, it just goes back. It's it's really annoying. So little tricky annoyances, and that the support is mostly basic. When when you know what VS Code can do. You would be like, oh, <laughs> you know, you will see the difference between two. That's what said. Like, um, site, Notepad plus plus are your simple cars, you know, your Toyotas, your stuff. VS Code would be the the Ferrari, but you know, if you're gonna be coding a lot, you probably want something good, right? So yeah, that's it, basically why we're we're talking about. A big aha for me also was that site and studio and Notepad plus plus. They're, they're editors, right? Versus VS Code is really an IDE. You can't call it an editor, right? Even though you edit right. things. It's, that was like, wow, because of that development involvement that you're doing. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about here, some of the stuff we cover in the course. So yeah. the course is four hours long or roughly around there. And it's jam-packed full. You, you've seen if you've been on any of the calls with me with where is sharing a screen, he does amazing stuff in VS Code. And we wanted to put out a course because it's not, it's a little bit of a learning curve, right? To use VS Code. So that's what our that's course right. is. Let me also kind of like bring the focus to the fact why is VS Code so popular? Like, and, and how popular it really is. Yeah, right. The idea, so we, we found an image online, and um, this is what it looks like. Visual Studio right now has 71% market share, at least the, uh, at the time that they created this. And the one following it is Visual Studio. Like it's the same, it's the same idea, the same concept. It's a big IDE, right? Um, and after those two, that's when you find Notepad Plus Plus, which is more of an editor than an IDE. An IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's like a whole whole package. Notepad Plus Plus is just open a file and edit. Um, but then you get these guys like IntelliJ, Vims, Android Studio. When Notepad plus plus, for example, doesn't have support for our hotkey v2. Uh, none of the other editors do, and the ones that we did have were not really. And that's why we created the course, kind of like outline. This is your re your only real choice for real v2 support. And basically, the idea here is that, of course, we're going to be starting off with what is the difference between an editor and ID. I just mentioned it in passing, but in here. We're going to talk a little bit more about them. That's how we're going to start the course. And then later on, we're going to see other points. For example, one of the easiest ones is, you know, how to install, how, how to download VS Code, but also how to even test it without installing, right? So you don't have to install VS Code in your computer to use it. That's one of the interesting things. And one, one of the reasons why it's so popular, you don't have to download it. You, you can just go online and test it. But if you need it in your computer for advanced features, and we teach you how to do that, how to configure your basic search, uh, your basic preferences. And then we go from there with the basics that you can see here on the search keyboard. Yeah, the there long more. And syncing your preferences, it reminds me, we, we uh, have a car here. My wife is very short. So when she gets in, she moves that seat so far up, like I can't even get in. But now I can hit a button because I have it saved as a preference, right? And adjust for me, which is the same yeah. thing. You can you can be on someone else's computer and basically log in and get all of your you know settings and your settings That's and everything. Right. And we are basically going to start with what the layout is, you know, how it looks because one that's one of the 
biggest shocks people are going to have. Once you have been coding on one editor for 15 years, for example, Notepad++, I was coding in that for a long time. When I first was introduced to VS Code, just the layout of how everything is you know, on the screen, like that's distracting for a little while until you get used to it. So we go ahead and explain a little bit more about that. Um, a lot of basics, basic stuff that, of course, most of you would know that those things exist, but some, some of those points are just slightly different in VS Code. And that's what we covered. Like, hey, those are the way, that's the way how we do it in here. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Then we go with other things like searching for text with the, with the quick search and the full search. Um, and then we talk about the intelligence. And that's basically the biggest point about VS Code, the intelligence support in VS Code for many languages, including the one that we use the most, which is Auto Hot V2. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's insane. You, you, you will like it. When, whenever I start exploring the IntelliSense options, you will see why we like it so much. Then we have configuring some extensions, um, how to run scripts. And, and even though we do focus a little bit about our hotkey scripts, most of the course is kind of like generalized that it applies for most of the languages. And actually, we do have a section about how VS Code integrates with other languages oh. as well. It's one of the one of the really super strong selling points. That's also, by the way, that first graph you showed with the I wouldn't call that market share because it doesn't add up to one hundred percent, right? But the percentage oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's correct yeah. programmers using right. But um, but the thing is, it's because you can open almost any language right that you want, which is just amazing. Studio is built for Auto Hotkey, and I think you can open JSON and XML, but that's it, <laughs> right? Like it, right. it's this yeah. can work with like any language you want, which is really great. Even sites for our hotkey can take a few more languages like HTML, but the, just the main ones. But again, the list is very limited. When you open VS Code, you will see almost just the default languages. The default language list, it's like 20 languages, if I remember well, right. Yeah, and in site, I mean, granted, I have like over 80 property files for working with languages, but it's as an editor with IntelliSense. Now, with Python, I used it as an IDE and I had to configure it and it took hours and hours and I had to record a video to myself to remember how to do it because yeah. it was not easy. VS right. Code, it's, it's all so much easier. And so that's right. why we're big proponents of it. But then after that, uh, we are going to see a little bit of the basics of debugging. I don't dive too deep into it. We see the basic debugging uh, things that you, some people might know even in their own languages how to do basic debugging. Then I show a little bit more advanced uh, uh, things that you can use in VS Code, and they are very specific to VS Code. But from there, if I had to take a long time to explain debugging, like that would be a course. I mean, so we don't dive that deep, but we give you the starting point with how to do it with VS Code and that you can extract value from it because debugging is where you're going to spend most of your time, right? Yeah. And yeah, programming is debugging. Yeah. The, the, I would definitely say that programming is that. So as you can see, we do have a nice kind of like overview of a range of topics that are going to be covered. That's why the course is about four hours long and we cover all of the, the, the basic building blocks so that you can start using VS Code right away. And in a week or two, you will be comfortable enough to, you know, do the most uh, common things that you're going to be doing most of the time in the edit. Yeah, so the, the course is around four hours. And don't forget, we have a 200% money back guarantee. So after you get the course, um, you got 30 days to try it out. And if for any reason you're not satisfied, we don't just pay you back what you paid for it. We pay you double what you paid for it, right? That's how confident we are that we did a good job delivering on this. Uh, and so, yeah, check it out. You have nothing at risk because we we take care of all that for you. Cheers. Bye.